In this video, I'm going to talk about reorder paragraphs, which is considered one of the most difficult questions in the test. Okay, so let's see how we can answer a question like this. So let's say I got a question like this, and there are four sentences on the left-hand side that I'll have to drag to the right-hand side in the correct order. Now, in the exam, practically speaking, I never go in the order of one, two, three, four, because most of the times it's not possible. What usually happens is I drag a few sentences to the right-hand side, I read them, and I feel like maybe they are not in the right order, then I change them. So although for this particular example, in order to make it easy for me to explain and easy for you to understand, I will go in the order of first to last sentence. If you're not able to put the sentences in that order, as I do here, and you usually... Um, change the order later on when you feel like maybe what you have done is not making sense that's perfectly fine because that is how most of us answer questions in the exam so you do not need to feel worried about that okay for this question for example after going through everything i feel like this must be the first sentence now what is my um rational behind that the rational is this one here says a student and in all the other sentences i can see name of the student so that means this is the most general uh, statement whereas the rest are giving me more specific information because they contain the name of this student so by using the logic of using general idea before this specific idea i'm just dragging this sentence to this side now among the rest of the sentences i can see this one says miss Bock bocking and this one says julia bocking and this one again says miss bocking now one thing i know is in order to refer to a person by using their surname i first have to use their full name and then only after that we start referring to those people by their surname an example of this is when we say mr david smith from next time we might just refer to this person by saying mr smith and that is the reason why I know that this sentence in particular must come before these two where the person is being referred is Miss Bucking. So that's why this will go here for me as the second sentence. So far I have made only one pair and there are still two sentences left on the left hand side. But the problem for me right now is without reading these sentences completely I don't think I'll be able to put them in the right order and i can't see any um, quick clues here which can help me to put the sentences in the right order on the right hand side so what i will do now is i'll read these two sentences more carefully so that i can see if logically i can put them in the right order there is no program like this in australia miss Bocking said who devised the project as the final component of her community education degree at the university and the next sentence is having worked as a literacy tutor with teenagers Ms. Bocking saw the need for good attitudes towards reading to be formed early on with help of more male role models. If we compare these two sentences, we can clearly see that the first sentence is talking about the project, as you can see. And if you look at the second sentence on the right hand side, it says uh, literacy in dad's project. So here in, in this side, the project means the project of Julia Bocking. And that's why this must be the next sentence as two sentences containing similar words must be together. And that's why Julia Bocking's Literacy and Dad's Project, and there is no program like this in Australia, Miss Bocking said, who devised the project, should be one after the other. And that will make, uh, there is no program, the third sentence. And that's why the remaining one would be the fourth sentence now. So this is how you can answer a question like this easily and quickly.